Welcome back to the channel, hockey fans. Let's examine the NHL career of the greatest defenseman of his generation who wasn't named Orr, the physical, scrappy Brad Park. Brad Park, born July 6, 1948, is a Canadian former professional ice hockey player, a defenseman. Park played in the National Hockey League for the New York Rangers, Boston Bruins, and Detroit Red Wings. He was drafted by the New York Rangers in the first round, second overall, in the 1966 NHL Amateur Draft and began playing for the Rangers in 1968. While with the Rangers, Park developed into a premier defenseman. He combined toughness, superior stick handling, and offensive ability that endeared him to the fans. Park was so proficient that he drew comparisons to Bobby Orr, whom he would briefly play with later in his career. Park remarked, I saw no reason to be upset because I was rated second to Bobby Orr. After all, Orr not only was the top defenseman in the game, but he was considered the best player to ever put on a pair of skates. There was nothing insulting about being rated number two to such a super superstar. Park was first team All-Star five times, a second teamer twice, and runner-up to Orr for the Norris on six occasions. In the 1972 Summit Series, with Orr unable to play due to injury, Park emerged as a critical contributor to Team Canada's series win over the Soviets, being named best defenseman of the series. When the upstart World Hockey Association tried to lure Park away, the Rangers re-signed him to a $200,000 a year contract that briefly made him the highest paid player in the NHL. After opening the 1975-76 season with their worst start in 10 years, the Rangers began to discard its high-priced veterans. Park, along with Jean Rattel and Joe Zanussi, was traded to the Boston Bruins in a November 7th blockbuster deal that also sent Phil Esposito and Carol Vadney to the Rangers, one that shocked the hockey world. The New York press and public had felt that Park, aged 27 at the time, was overweight, overpaid, and over the hill, as he was facing unfavorable comparisons to Dennis Potvin. The trade to Boston proved beneficial for Park. Under coach Don Cherry, Park transitioned from a puck-carrying end-to-end defenseman to a defensive specialist. Though he played on some outstanding teams with the Rangers and Bruins, Park never won the Stanley Cup. He did appear in 161 career playoff games, and his teams never missed the postseason during his 18-year NHL career. He also topped the 20-goal mark three times and scored at least 10 goals 12 times. Park was elected to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1988. In 2017, he was named one of the 100 greatest NHL players in history. In 1977 and 1978, Park was a key contributor to Boston's back-to-back -back appearances in the Stanley Cup Finals, where they lost to the Montreal Canadiens both times. His last highlight with Boston came in Game 7 of the Adams Division Finals against the Buffalo Sabres in the 1983 playoffs, when Park scored the game-winning goal in overtime and helped Boston advance into the Conference Finals. The following season, 1983-84, Park signed with the Detroit Red Wings as a free agent. That same year, he won the Bill Masterton Trophy for Perseverance, having set a record for assists by a Red Wings defenseman with 53. After the 1985 season, still an effective player but hobbled by repeated knee injuries, he announced his retirement. The following year, he served as Detroit's head coach before he was fired on June 3, 1986. In 1998, he was ranked 49 on the Hockey News list of the 100 Greatest Hockey Players. In the 2009 book, 100 Granger Greats, he was ranked number 11 all-time the 901 New York Rangers who had played during the team's first 82 seasons. In 1988, Park was elected in his first year of eligibility to the Hockey Hall of Fame in his hometown of Toronto. Park was one of five plaintiffs, along with Dave Forbes, Rick Middleton, Alf Nilsson, and Doug Smale in Forbes v. Eagleson, a class action lawsuit filed in 1995 on behalf of about 1,000 NHL players who were employed by the NHL teams between 1972 and 1991 against Alan Eagleson, the league and its member clubs. The players alleged that the NHL and its teams violated the Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations RICO Act by colluding with Eagleson to enable him to embezzle from the National Hockey League Players Association NHLPA, and that the four-year statute of limitations in civil racketeering cases began when Eagleson was indicted in 1994. The lawsuit was dismissed on August 27, 1998 in United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania by Thomas Newman O'Neill Jr., who ruled that the statute of limitations expired because it had begun in 1991 when the players were made aware of the allegations against Eagleson 
O'Neill's decision was upheld in the United States Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit on October 17, 2000. In August 2012, Park published his autobiography, Straight Shooter, The Brad Park Story. Brad Park remains a respected figure in the hockey world, and fans remember him as a remarkable defenseman who left a lasting mark on the sport. These days, Brad Park has chosen a life away from the limelight in a place that offers tranquility and natural beauty. He has made his home in the serene surroundings of Sabago Lake in Maine. His residence, a testament to his love for the quiet and peaceful, is a reflection of the simple life he enjoys post-retirement. With a storied career behind him, Brad Park's choice of residence aligns with the values of privacy and simplicity, embracing the calmness of his lakeside home. Hey hockey fans, if you like this content, please poke check that subscribe button. You can also follow my blog at https.tedtalkshockey.com and remember to keep your stick on the ice. Thanks for watching.